Hey guys, Magnetoker here and welcome to the fourth video of modding our original Xbox system. If you've been following along with all the soft mod videos, thank you guys so much for coming in for this particular one because this is the one you guys have been waiting for and that is upgrading the hard drive. So again, if this is your kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button that way you're notified every time I post a new video. And this video is gonna cover, and this is gonna be assuming also, that's the disclaimer, assuming that you've basically kept the original Xbox hard drive in the system itself. It could be depending on the version of the Xbox you have uh, from eight gigabytes all the way to 20, which as we all know, is not nearly enough for any games for you guys to install. You can put maybe two or three uh, maximum four, I guess, if you want. So with this particular hard drive upgrade, uh, in my case, I'm going to put a 500 gigabyte hard drive into the system. Uh, you guys can go up to a terabyte. I think the maximum is, is two. I uh, wouldn't go super overboard, but if you guys just want to like dump your entire disk library into the system, this is definitely uh, the way to go. So you guys can have all your games. So you don't need the discs anymore. You can just play everything off the hard drive, which is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love this aspect of having a soft modded system. So again, this is your kind of thing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments below on your experience experience on the soft mods so far or in this particular video if you had any issues uh go ahead and leave that in the comments below so i can help you guys out as well but other than that thank you again for stopping by let's get started all right so the first thing we're going to need is obviously we're going to need the xbox system itself any version will work and we're gonna need our tool set as well. And this is a really cool tool set I found on Amazon. So if you guys want the link, I'll go ahead and just post it in the description below. The parts are magnetic, so they pull all the metal screws out nice and easy. We are also gonna need a Molex power splitter. And the one you're looking for in particular is one that is one male leading to two females, as you can see here. So make sure you get one of those. We're also gonna need an IDE adapter. And one that we're looking for in particular is one that has the slave and master function here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this little plastic piece here and make this IDE as a slave state at the moment. As you can see, it's under, under slave. That way we're able to copy everything from one hard drive to another. You're also going to need a new IDE ribbon, a 40 to 80 pin. I'll post that in the link as well. And finally, we're going to need our hard drive. Here is our 500 gigabyte hard drive. But if you want SSD, make sure you also get yourself a crate along with that. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, in the system loose and just, you know, <laughs> we want to make sure it's snug. We want to make sure it's snug. But other than that, uh, let's go ahead and start tearing down this system here. Let's go ahead and uh, flip him over. Uh, we have done this in a video before, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. There are six screws that we have to take out. Unfortunately, two of them are under stickers. So once you take these screws out, you basically ruin the stickers. I did find two replacement stickers that I can use like off Etsy, but we won't do that until we finally finalize this series of Xbox upgrades. So other than that, four more under the pad. And as you can see, you kind of have to tear those pads up a little bit, but as long as you're careful, they won't, they won't break. But once those are completely out, we should be able to lift the lid of this system nice and easy. As you can see here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the good stuff here. So here we're going to take off the three screws holding down these cradles down. Kind of got this one stuck here, but I was able to use the magnetic part of the, the tool here so we can go ahead and switch that out. And we're going to go ahead and unplug our old IDE cable from the hard drive itself. And we're going to go ahead and unplug the power while we're at it as well. That way we can take or uh, lift the cradle and kind of set it aside for now. Because uh, right now what we're going to do is we're going to take our new IDE cable and fold it. So that way we can replace it with the one we currently have right now. So let's lift the disk drive cradle out of the way as well. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the IDE cable from the back of the DVD drive. Uh, I might as well just unplug the power as well. And then we're going to go ahead and set this DVD drive to the side and we're going to go ahead and unplug the IDE cable so we can start the folding process here. So what I like to do, as you can see, I already pre-folded this just to see if it'll work, but I like to face the holes down first. And as you can see, there's this one diagonal fold that I like to do. But once you get that fold down, it should be vertical as you can see here, kind of like a 90 degree angle between the what you have uh, from the cable and the cable that's folding up. Then I flip this around and then I fold it again directly upwards, again, creating another 90 degree angle here with the rest of the cabling. Then once you get to the other side, um, what I like to do is I like to fold 
this side up, giving it more of a more of a length than the blue one here. But all the pins, or sorry, all the holes should be facing up to, at this point. Go ahead and make that fold happen there. And then finally, this is not completely necessary. The folds that we just did are basically the most important ones. But if you want to be super or want to have a nice clean Xbox here, what I like to do is have this one fold here. And it's kind of like a diagonal fold, the way I made this work. But it, you're basically able to kind of scrunch up the rest of it to kind of fit under the Xbox cradle from there. But yeah, this is basically what it should look like. So I'm going to go ahead and get the DVD drive here. I'm going to go ahead and plug the middle part of the ribbon that we just folded to the back of it. We're going to take the blue part and flip it over because that's what we need to go on top. And then the other gray part, we're just going to leave it at the bottom. As you can see, we did fold it there. We're going to scrunch it up nice and neat there so it fits under the system. I like clean cabling, but I'm going to go ahead and flip this disk drive over here so we can go ahead and plug the bottom end into the motherboard itself, as you can see here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and take the power cord and just plug it into the disk drive itself. And then we're going to go ahead and just reset this whole system back to its original state with everything nice and neatly fitted into there. But as you can see, our folds, this is going to fold right across our system. And that last fold is going to go right into our IDE uh, port there. So look at that. Nice and clean. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Molex splitter and we're going to take the male side and plug it into the system cable itself, which means we should have two female parts kind of hanging out right now. We're going to take one of them and immediately plug it into the back of our current system, as you can see here. And we're going to put this other side down for now while we work on our other hard drive. I'm going to take the IDE adapter again. Make sure it's set to slave. That way we can copy all the contents from our old hard drive to this new one. And we're going to take our new hard drive and then just plug, plug in the IDE adapter to it. I'm having a little bit of trouble here, so a better way to do it is just to flip it over and make the connection there. And once we have it nice and ready, let's go ahead and take the other female side of our power splitter into the IDE adapter here, as you can see. If you guys still have the anti-static plastic that came with the new hard drive, I would definitely use that. I like to use it, as you can see here. But right now what I'm doing is setting up my my hard drive and my xbox so i can go ahead and make the swap happen you guys have probably heard about this this is called a hard drive swap and we're going to set our positioning here with the cables and the hard drives as, as easy as possible but as you can see here our swap is going to happen from our disk drive ribbon we're going to take that out and plug it straight into the new hard drive as you can see there so we need to turn on our Xbox. And I know it's crazy because we have all kinds of components hanging out, but we need to make sure this connection um, does happen while the Xbox is on. Just leave the Xbox on this particular screen for about 10 to 15 minutes, leave it alone. Basically the system will just idle at that moment. And while it's idling, that's exactly when we need to do the hot swap. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the hot swap now. So while the system is idling, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the ribbon from the back of the disk drive. And the moment it unhooks, the moment it unplugs, you have about two to three seconds to make the connection to the back of the hard drive. So be quick about it. As you can see here, I most likely made the connection successfully. And you'll know if you made the connection successfully if Chimp runs successfully. So if it doesn't, just go ahead and wait another 10-15 minutes like we did earlier and then try again until you finally get it down. Again, you have two to three seconds. You kind of have to be quick about it. So uh, good luck. And once you get there, I'll meet you guys there. From the Xbox dashboard, go to Applications and then go to Chimp Loader. Now, if you see a blank screen, that means your connection uh, video wise from the Xbox to whatever source you're connecting to is not working. Most likely the issue I ran into was a capture card. So if you guys are having issues having your capture card capture this particular screen, make sure instead to use like a component or AV cable straight to the TV to do this process. So go ahead and hit the A button. It'll take you over to this next screen here. Press any button at this point and it should take you to the next screen here. We're going to head down to soft modded Xbox and go ahead and choose yes this is a big disclaimer here basically telling you that this program doesn't take any responsibility but it also very specifically asks you do not unlock the master hard drive so we will not do that so let's go ahead and go down to scan physical ide devices and that way we can see whether or not our 
Xbox was able to read our slave drive. So if you did it quickly enough, that means it was able to read the slave drive. So it should be showing a model number or a serial number. Otherwise, um, if it doesn't show that, it means that you failed and you probably have to go back and do the uh, swap one more time. So hit OK and then go down to the second option that says clone from master to slave. And then from there, the option is already selected, but we're going to go to option number two where it says selective. Go ahead and hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and choose the first option here. And then uh, from here, we're going to go down to the second option and we're going to press X on our controller. And that what makes that's what makes the X go from option to option. So once you hit X to select the option, then you hit A on your controller to actually select it. So we're going to choose F occupies all available space. And what that does is basically it frees up our F drive or our F partition for just the game. So basically you'll have, you know, the C drive for like the dashboards, the E drive for programs and applications, and the F drive is just going to be solely for games. So all the games you can install, just install it to that F drive, uh, which is going to be awesome. This is typically what I do. Um, you can create other partitions, but I don't see any other reason to have any other partitions other than C for the dashboards and then E for your applications and then F for your, all your games. So go ahead and choose that one, hit confirm format, hit yes, and then a chimp will do all the work on its own. It'll ask you to wait, but it's basically preparing your slave drive, which is your new hard drive to be written with all the information that is contained within your uh, old hard drive. So when the process is almost complete, it's going to ask you if you want to go ahead and lock your slave hard drive. Go ahead and choose the yes option because we want to make sure that it's locked once all the information is copied over. It says slave hard drive locked successfully. So go ahead and hit OK. Go down to other options and then go to shut down. And from there, we're basically done. The only thing you have to do is basically replace the hard drive, the old hard drive that's in the cradle. Put in the new hard drive into cradle and also please do not forget to change the slave back to master so now that we have our hard drive in our cradle and everything is looking neat we can go ahead and power our hard drive through the ide adapter go ahead and plug in the wire that's in the xbox towards it and then use the hooks to kind of guide the wire all the way towards it we're going to use our ide our new one our 80 pin ide cable and make sure we plug that to the back of the ide adapter as well and if our folds were good then that means we have a nice clean system and i'm also going to check just to make sure everything's flush and even so when we put the cover on uh, that we don't have any hiccups but we're going to go ahead and put in the three screws that we took out earlier uh, one under the ribbon one <laughs> under the river under the ribbon one to the left of the dvd drive one between the dvd drive and the hard drive we're going to put the cover back on Again, I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything is flush. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quality check on the front. I'm going to do one on the back. Make sure everything looks good. That way when, you know, we don't want to un uh, unscrew everything again. But if everything looks good, you're good to go. Now we're going to go ahead and flip the system over. And we're going to go ahead and put in all the screws that we took out earlier, the large ones. Right, I'm going to go ahead and lift up this tab here and screw in the large screw into the top here. Uh, don't forget about the other five. Remember there's six of them, four under the pads and then two under the stickers here. So let's go ahead and put those in there. But once it's done, we can do one more check just to make sure everything is flush, everything looking good, looking great so far. So that's it. We're basically done with our upgrade of our hard drive. So there you have it guys. Now you guys have an original Xbox system with a much larger hard drive. That way you guys can install all the games that you want into the system itself. Uh, my needs were 500 gigabytes, but your needs could be a lot different. You guys can have more games or you guys just want to install every single game that you guys can think of on there. That's totally fine. Uh, if you guys really enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post one of these videos. And also leave uh, something in the comments below. That way you guys, you know, can ask me, you know, hey, I'm having issues with this. I can maybe answer a few questions or if you guys really enjoyed the video, uh, you guys can post that on there as well. I'm no for the next video. I am going to do maybe one.
yeah one more video for a lot of you this could be the final one this is it like all you needed this is you guys are done you guys are good to play your games but if you notice your xbox system is running a little bit hot or maybe it's running a little bit loud the next one is completely optional the next video is completely optional but i'm basically going to cover how to replace the fan with a silent fan that just blows out you know a ton of air the same the same exact amount of air if not more and we're also going to cover how to replace the stock thermal paste that is on your original xbox system again these systems are like almost 20 years old 15 to 20 years old uh, depending on what version you got so we want to make sure that this system lasts a long time so what i'm we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and you know pry off the the heat sink take off that gunky old thermal paste that's on there and then just go ahead and replace it with a fresh new coat and that way our system is going to live a long happy life especially because they're putting the work into it with the hard drives and cleaning it up and everything uh this could be a video for you guys to follow as well but if you guys are cool and you guys are happy uh you guys are done other than that i'll see you guys in the next video again thank you so much for coming by and i will see you guys next time bye bye